Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, we are going to finalize uh, the embedded plate we started in this playlist to write a simple code. It's not a code, just procedure in uh, MATCAD. So then, then we can uh, learn how to write simple equations and also simple uh, programs, which is, for example, using if and minimum maximum these kind of things and checking the uh, the embedded plate by a ready to be used uh, matcha chip it is very beneficial to know how to write it and later on you can use the uh, sheet for other similar tasks however it is not meant to be uh, used for any kind of uh, embedded plate you should notice that if it is relevant to this code or to this MATLAB sheet. Let's do so. First, when you open MATLAB, uh, you will see this uh, sheet, which is by default uh, with the high margin and also the uh, paper is uh, by default set. If you come to document, you can see that it is letter 8.5 inch by 11 inches, and then you can easily change it for example to a4 if you want also you can change orientation usually you might have long equations that you don't want to go to this separate page uh, in that case i set it to be landscape and here you can set the margin for example to be narrow and that would be quite enough also you have the possibility to use headers that you can write uh, something for example also you can change the text formatting if you want uh, here you can have your text style it was not possible in matcad prime 8 i suppose but here you can change and you can make your new style if you want and here you can set what kind of font you want to use and in the other side for example you can write project number or project xxx again using time romance and also at the end you can write the date today is 14th of uh, june 2023 and that's pretty fine also you can come back and you can have the footer at the right side i would like to use page number and here it is uh, you can just select all and change the font if you want or use your own style then if you double click on the page you can see that uh, it is not in the header or footer you can continue to write your code here i have one uh, code that i set it up earlier on the 12th of june and to minimize the time for writing i just uh, go with the code that i wrote gradually we can uh, just see how the code is written in the video number one we had the introduction to the plate and also the wall so first of all we need to go with the initial data so what kind of initial data we are going to use then supporting concrete element you can go with embedded plate uh, it doesn't matter so wall height uh, it's four meters which is written the it should it should be switched uh, i will do it at the end wall thickness is 400 millimeter and then nominal characteristic compressive cylinder s strength fck is 30 megapascal according to our example uh, you can write down the text according to uh, what you want to find it easier and then concrete elasticity modulus 33 gigapascal as we used then gamma mc partial factor for concrete cone concrete edge concrete blowout and concrete pry out failure modes so you can find this text uh, in the code 1992 part 4 in the beginning of the code different parameters are introduced what kind of uh, name they have then it comes to the embedded plate and fasteners so plate width was 300 millimeter we can continue with plate length 
300 millimeter as well uh, you can have your your own standard to how to name or how to uh, use parameters fastener diameter bs 16 millimeter number of fastener in each row for example you might have three uh, fasteners in each row this code is written for only two uh, fasteners two rows of fasteners one in compression the other one in tension if your case is different then you need to modify that internal distance between the fastener in shear direction so in that direction it, if you remember we had 180 millimeter according to the Velda product we use from Peiko and also in the other direction perpendicular to the force to the shear force it was also 180 millimeter edge distance from the closest fasteners to the wall edge in shear force direction so if uh, you recall we had 710 millimeter from the first row closest to the edge of the concrete wall and in the other direction it was 110 millimeter as we went through with the first video effective embedment depth 157 millimeter and then here you can use eccentricity this is for the uh, resultant tension force we didn't have any eccentricity we can set it to be zero if you have eccentricity for sure you can just modify this value by default also shear force has been divided between four fasteners in this example equally as a result eccentricity is zero for that then diameter of the head of uh, the head of fastener so 32 millimeter according to the uh, product that we used thickness of head of headed fastener 8 millimeter a steel modulus of elasticity 210 gigapascal nominal characteristic steel yield a strength 350 megapascal and also nominal characteristic steel ultimate tensile stress 450 megapascal you can just write down in an easy way and write down something about the uh, explanation of what parameter you are using then we need to use design actions normal force 120 kilonewton here you can see that i wrote in parentheses that compressive is taken as positive value so if you are using different uh, method you can just write a note that you know uh, how you define them because usually after a while you might not remember exactly what you used in that code bending moment 20 kilonewton meter and finally shear force ved 10 kilonewton these are the parameters that we had in our example after that this is something you can set up in the beginning or you can just uh, leave it to the relevant section to introduce required coefficients k1 k2 and so on k1 was 8.9 that uh, for concrete cone if i recall correctly it has been used after that k2 7.5 we needed k6 which was based on fuk as a result you can write a simple if clause here how to write it here for example you can go to the first page and here let's say that if uk is 500 or let's say 450 megapascal then you can write out for example k6 equals to here in programming you open this uh, line and the first one is if clause so the first uh, item needs to uh, write the condition that you want to be checked it's if f uk is less than 500 megapascal so if f uk is less than or equal 500 megapascal then it should be 0 0.6 otherwise else so it should be 0 0.5 then you have the code as written here and you can see that uh, k6 equals to 0 0.6 in our example and if you change it to 550 megapascal then it is 0 0.5 k7 1 k8 2 
K9 1.7. So after that, usually you are willing to see the results. So typically you might not be interested in the whole body of your code. As a result, it is better if we use area and hide it after we finish our code. For that, here I can explain how to do it. You come to document and here you have area in the region. Then you have this part that you can write down something, for example, uh, a six times F U K. Let's give a name to that. It's F, for example. So here you can write it down and you can just hide it after you write the code and you don't see, you can save the paper. And here F equals to 275 megapascal. So that's a very uh, good option that you can hide whatever you wrote and you can just see the results immediately after you write the code. So here it is. After that, we can continue to write down our calculation. From here, in video number two of this series, we went through the calculation of uh, tension force in steel and compressive stress in the concrete. So for that, we need to find out what uh, the distances are from both ends. We went through that in video number two. So here, plate edge distance parallel to shear force, CS1, L of the plate minus S1 divided by two, and also CS2, which is distance for a steel up to the end of the plate, so not to the, uh, not to the wall. CS2, B plate minus S2 divided by two. We can continue with single fastener area, which is pi, pi uh, which is pi V S S squared divided by four. Then tensile fastener stress. This has been uh, explained in video number two. You can write down that, okay, F S in this case, R or left or whatever you please. Uh, can be calculated according to the given function. After that, we can write down the, the force, the tensile force inside that uh, single fastener. Here, I wrote according to one fastener. And then concrete compressive force, Cs as a function of Fc and x, 0.5 Fc B plate times x. After that, as we went through, Partially for the solver calculation in video number two, you can calculate the X and also FC. So solver the concrete maximum stress and compressive distance. So here it's the same as when, uh, what we went through in the relevant video. And after that, you can find out concrete maximum compressive stress, which is 9.45 megapascal and also the compressive distance which is 106.13 millimeter after that you need to check if the distance is greater than cs1 because it should be confirmed that only one row in this case is in tension so the other side or the other fastener should be in compression to approve that condition that should be met is x should be greater than cs1 so if it is equal to one then uh, it means that it is correct if not it shows that it is zero as a result you can just mark it highlight it to show the condition if it is not green then it should be changed let's check something here for example if we have a condition if f is less than let's say 300 megapascal and then you just press equal and you will see that it's one. If I write it 250 megapascal, you will see that the condition is not met. In MATLAB 15, we had the chance to write a simple code, a script to uh, check if the condition is met, then the color could be adjusted to be, for example, green. If it is not, it could be said to be red. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way how to do it here in MATCAD Prime. Then, as you will check here, 
And if it is correct, you can continue. I put all the other calculation in another area. You can name the areas by yourself. You can lock them just to prevent if you are going to use an r and in, in your organization or in your company, then you can set it to be completely locked or could be visible for others, but it cannot be modified. And then you can just adjust the name for each part. So first of all, we are going to calculate the partial factors for a steel failure. We went through this in video number three, gamma ms. I used the extension of T showing that it's in tension. Uh, maximum of 1.2 FUK divided by FYK or 1.4, whichever is greater. So here 1.54. And then for shear also, we had another uh, condition. Uh, if FUK is less than 800 megapascal and FUYK divided by FUK is less than 0 0.8, then that value needs to be taken. Otherwise, you can see how to write or. If you remember in the code, it was and and it was or. Let's let's have a look on uh, something conditional here. For example, let's have uh, uh, something like H equals to 500 millimeter. Now let's have a look on how we can write that. In our code, I can just uh, delete these two. Let's say we are going to find the uh, coefficient k equals to if f is less than 300 and h is less than 1000 millimeter simultaneously, then k can be taken one. So simply you come to programming and you use this uh, program line and immediately you start with if. So if f is less than 300 megapascal and then you want to use and here in the operators you can use this and function so logical and and if h is less than let's say 600 millimeter or 1000 millimeter then this value can be taken one so here you can use otherwise or else then you can say that okay if not it is 0 0.6 then here we can see that k is taken as 1 as far as f equals to 275 megapascal and h is also less than 600. If I change it to 700, then we can see that k is taken as 0 0.6. Also, instead of writing else, you can have that condition with else if. So is if f is greater or equal to 300 megapascal or if you want to use or then you come to operators and here you can use logical or h is greater or equal to 600 millimeter then it's taken as 0 0.6 so here you can see that still it's working that's why i wrote this way to show how to use this or logical or function and after that, you can just uh, simply in the code, you can write equals and then you can see the result here. If I change this to 500, then you can see that it's one. We can continue a steel failure of uh, fastener intention. So this was the first check. Uh, we calculated here the forces as a function of FC and X. And here we found FC and X. So now we can continue. First, characteristic value of a steel resistance of a fastener under tension load, NRKS FUK times AS1. One important note before we go forward here, you can see that the number of fasteners are considered in the calculation here. So if you are writing the T as a function of all fasteners, then you don't need to use this NS here. It depends on how you are writing that code or your uh, calculation. Design value of a steel resistance of a fastener on the tension load. If you remember, we had to divide NRKS by gamma MS in tension, which results in 58 kilonewton. Then design value of steel acting on a fastener under tension load. So it's just 
one of the uh, fasteners force which we wrote as a function of ts and it's 15.3 kilonewton then you can write down how to calculate utilization ratio the utilization ratio will be ned divided by nrds and that's the end of fastener intention check then we can go through concrete cone failure from here you can see that i wrote the clause of what we are using there are different ways that you might want to have your code here i wrote exactly the name of nrks but from here to make it uh, as simple as possible you can just write for example i use ensfs 1992-4 and from this clause i use 7214 clause number two so here you can write down this equation k1 we already uh, define this value in the beginning of this code and then fck divided by one megapascal usually if you have some kind of equations that you that might not result in a reasonable value a reasonable unit then you need to implement a method to to write it down in MATLAB. let's go through this in our uh, other sheet so here assume that i have h effective to be 157 millimeter and fck in our calculation was 30 megapascal and now i want to write k1 was 8.9 so now i'm going to write this nrkc0 nrkc0 equals to if i write the equation directly a square root of fck times h effective power by 1.5 then you can see that the result instead of being kilonewton is completely different it's a square root of kilogram times meter per second so this is not what we are willing to have as a result it's better if we change this in a way that the values which are for example powered by something or they are in s square root calculation then better to use unitless so the unit of uh, fck is megapascal i divided by megapascal and also h effective is millimeters so if i use this one then you can see that it is unitless i can just so then you cannot continue for the rest of your calculation so this seems to be newton as a result i just multiply it by one newton then you will have the proper uh, result and proper unit so that's how it works and after that we go to the next clause uh, scrn three times h effective and cs c c r n half of s c r n a c n zero s c r n times s c r n and you can have the results or you can just skip not showing the result then a c n c of the cone so here you can just make a screenshot and put it here to remember how to do it and later on i will mark this value to another color that you can easily spot the place that you need to think about it is this applied to my case this time or not so in our case it was scrn times t of the wall so here we have the results the next one is calculation of some factors psi sn according to what is given in the code and relevant clause is written here psi r e n psi eccentricity n as a result as far as we didn't have any eccentricity so it should be one it is and then the next clause psi m n we took it conservatively to be one then calculation of n r k c here you can see that already n r k c zero is in kilonewton so that's what we set and a c n is 
area divided by area so it's dimensionless other factors are also dimensionless as a result the uh, answer will be the same unit as nrkc0 then design resistance in case of concrete cone failure under tension load nrdc nrkc divided by gamma mc and also ned if you recall we had to calculate the group tension for this check that's why ns needs to be multiplied by ts and finally utilization ratio for concrete cone it's 70 67 percent after that pull out failure of fastener class 7215 diameter of uh, of the fastener is representing as da so it should be written as da is phi s then here dh uh, if you remember we had to limit head diameter to six times t head plus da as a result here you can write down that dh is this one if you notice we have a green uh, rectangle around dh it means that this parameter has been used earlier in this code. Uh, usually I do not like this and I write, for example, here DH effective, but you can use uh, your method. And AH, you can see that I didn't write anything else because all of these are coming from this clause. As a result, you don't need to add extra text. NRKP, K2, AH, FCK and gamma mp for pull out failure gamma mc and then design resistance in case of fastener pull out failure under tension load and utilization ratio again we needed to calculate only one and here it is the utilization ratio is about 17 percent the next one is concrete splitting failure uh, from class 7217 item number 2 part D NRKSP was minimum of these two values gamma MC in splitting failure and then the design value needs to be calculated based on division of NRKSP divided by gamma MC and finally utilization ratio for this concrete splitting failure which is 48% then for concrete blowout failure, if you remember, we had the option that we could ignore this uh, failure. And I wrote the code in a very simple way. If minimum of C1 and C2 are greater than half of H effective, it is not applicable. So you can write this way to put the text that you want uh, to be shown as utilization ratio. For this case, otherwise, I wrote that this is not completed. So if you want, you can go through the code and you can complete it by yourself. Write down that how it should be calculated if minimum of C1 and C2 are not greater than half of H effect. And utilization ratio for this blowout failure for now, for this example, is not applicable. So it was the end of tension calculation. The next is checking the shear force for a steel and concrete for a steel failure of fastener in this example we had shear load without levier arm so shear force without levier arm we had two rows as written in the uh, denominator two times ns ns is the number of fasteners in each row it could be three even but if it was three we had to uh, just write the code a little bit differently because we had two s2s then according to class 722311 vrks0 is k6 times as1 fuk this is for one single fastener and after that vrks according to 72231 item number two it was k7 times vrks0 uh, if I recall correctly, we went through the shear forces in video number five. Yes, we started with video number five to go through the 
uh, shear forces. And after that, you can calculate design value of a steel resistance of a fastener or channel bolt under shear load, VRKS divided by gamma MS. And utilization ratio is the fraction of shear force in one fastener divided by the resistance, which was about 6%. Then concrete pry out failure. We went through this in video number seven, uh, plus seven two 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 four, item number two. Uh, again, ACNC pry out has been calculated according to uh, all bolts being involved in this calculation. So that's why ACN is different than what we use for concrete cone failure. Here, this is another item that you can just highlight it if it is needed in your calculation you can just uh, you can just change it to uh, desired color just to catch your eyes when when you are checking okay it should be double check is this the same as what we had earlier or not at least i i forget after a while that uh, what I did for, for a certain task, then I need to see the report or to see my calculation. If I write nothing, then it is hard to remember. And RKC pry out, according to the given equation, the only thing that has changed is ACNCPRO. And then VRKCP was K8 times NRKC pry out. And then you can calculate the design resistance, which in our case was 126 kilonewton. And then utilization ratio for the entire shear force, it was about 8% as we calculated earlier in video number seven. The other one, concrete edge failure, we went through this in video number six as well. I think, yes, it was video number six, we covered this concrete edge failure. EN uh, SFS class 7225 item number 5 we started with D nominal which was the fastener diameter again D nominal is VS then LF uh, so we had two items again uh, if and else function to be used if D nominal is less than 24 millimeter minimum of these two if it is not then it should be calculated according to the code. Here it is a very uh, nice uh, interpretation of the code. So we can have a look how to write and how to interpret these uh, statements from the codes. So LF is H effective and it should be less than 12 times D nominal if D nominal is less than 24 millimeter. And it should be H effective but less than maximum these two values. So let's have some. Uh, already we have H effective D nominal, let's say is 16 millimeter. What else do we need? Nothing for here. I can bring H effective also to here just to make it easier to follow. So here LF equals to, we can write down if clause so we start from here if d nominal is less than 24 millimeters so if d nominal is less than or equal to 24 millimeter then it should be h effective but less than 12 d nominal it means that if it is greater than 12 times d nominal then uh, it should be the a smaller value as a result it will be minimum of h effective and 12 times the nominal that's the first part then it goes to otherwise if the nominal is greater than 24 millimeters so it should be the minimum between h effective and maximum of those values that is given so it will be written as minimum of h effective and maximum of eight times d nominal and 300 millimeter so here it is 157 millimeter let's play with the numbers now let's change it to uh, 28 or you know, 32 millimeter 
So still, as far as 8 times H denominal, it's 256 millimeter. So H effective is less than that. But now let's change this to 300 or 280 millimeter. So here you can see that if H effective is 280 millimeter, then 8 times denominal is 20, 256 millimeter, which the maximum value between 8 times denominal as, and 300 millimeter will be 300 millimeter. As a result, then the minimum value of maximum of these two values, 300 and 8 times denominal, and the minimum of this 280 millimeter, as still you can see that 200 millimeter is the answer. But if I change, for example, this to 320 millimeter, then you can see that it is limited to 300 millimeter. So this is a way to interpret the code and write it as a simple code for yourself. The same as I wrote here. Then we calculated alpha according to the given equation, the same clause. As a result, I didn't write anything here, beta. And then we are KC0 in the same uh, clause. But here you can see that as far as it's completely nonlinear in terms of units, I used one millimeter to have non-dimensional unit here, non-dimensional unit here, 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 and as far as it should be Newton, then I multiply it by one Newton. Here you can see that the result is kilonewton. Then ACV0, according to the same clause, 4.5 times C1 S square. Then H, concrete edge failure. So here, you can again write down that if C1 is less than maximum of 10 times H effective and 60 times phi S, then uh, the height will be minimum of H wall and 1.5 C1. If not, then minimum of H wall and 1.5 C1 plus S1 because you can use a uh, greater uh, height for that. You can refer to the given instruction in the code, or you can just use uh, the graph or the screenshot of the relevant uh, clause to put it here just to remember easier and faster. Then B concrete in edge failure. So 1.5 times C1 times two in two sides plus S2, but it should be limited to T of the wall. So it is limited to the thickness of the wall here. Then you can calculate ACV. Again, you can use one screenshot of the code to show how it should be calculated and just highlight this item that later on you can use it. Then from clause uh, 72259, you can calculate the modification factor psi SV, then psi HV, the next clause, psi eccentricity V. We didn't have any eccentricity and it was one. Then for inclination of the shear force, alpha V was zero and then psi alpha V was taken as one. Here you can write the code for yourself just in case if you have something. Uh, psi REV from 7225 item number 13 and then coming back to item number five to calculate VRKC characteristic resistance in edge failure. Then the resistance in design and finally checking the concrete edge failure according to the entire shear force which is coming to those closest fasteners to the wall edge. After that we went through the combined tension and shear loads another item that you need to check then you can just simply put one screenshot of the table that you are using for just uh, your reference. And here is the steel failure for the combined check. And here you can see that uh, utilization ratio steel combined is the tension square plus shear square, so which is 7.1%. After that, we used both nonlinear and linear combination for concrete. The first one was combined uh, 
for nonlinear, which was with the power of 1.5 from this table, equation 7.55. And here you can see that uh, if you remember, we had to use the maximum utilization ratio. And here in this maximum function, we had the value for concrete cone, we had the value for concrete pull out, and we had the value for concrete splitting, but we didn't have any values for for uh, concrete blowout, and it was not applicable. As a result, you can just use a trick here. If utilization ratio is not applicable, then take it as zero. Otherwise, you can just write down that, okay, this is not completed. Then you can just uh, develop your code. Plus maximum of utilization ratio, pry out and edge failure, whichever is greater, power by 1.5 and the result is 82.9%. Also with the linear calculation, the same concept, please remember that it should be divided by 1.2 if you want to have utilization ratio. Otherwise you will see something more than one and you might think that, okay, this is not working. But if we come back to the table, you can see that this value is the utilization ratio should be greater than 1.2 and then we can divide both sides by 1.2. So this is the end of your code, but uh, we need to have some kind of uh, presentation at the end to, sh to see uh, easier, to find out if the, uh, if the calculation looks to be fine or not. For that, you can have a separate results sheet and you can define, for example, here you can write down, okay, utilization ratio for tension is a steel, concrete cone failure, concrete pullout failure, concrete splitting failure, concrete blowout failure. And here you can write utilization ratio and also you can write down that the results are in percentages. And for that, you can just multiply 100 times utilization ratio of, for example, a steel, concrete cone, concrete pullout, concrete splitting failure, and blowout. For this, you can use the matrices table. Let's go through here. For example, result equals to here. You can come to the matrix table and then let's just have one example. The first one, I will just write nothing. The second one, I will write that, let's say, utilization ratio in percentages. And then here you can write down, for example, case number one, and the next one, case number two. Uh, let's say that this is just, just example, D nominal divided by, for example, 40 millimeter, and then you can multiply by 100. And the other one is, let's say, 100 times H effective divided by 400 millimeter. So this is how you need to write it down. And if I want to see the result, I can just press here. And here you can see that both are 80%. And if I change this to 300, you can see that it is 75%. If I go to 31.25, then you can see that the result is with three digits. For that, you can come to math formatting. And here you can change the digits to the desired value that you want. Just click on the table and here you can just use zero, for example, or even you can use one. So here you can see how to use the significance that you want. After that, we can continue for the utilization ratios in shear check. We have a steel concrete pry out and concrete edge failure, the same concept. And then we have also combined. And after that, you can add result summary. Here you can see that my area is ended because I want to close it and I don't want to check all of them. And I might be interested only the summary of the whole calculation. So here you just need to write down utilization ratio of tension equals, and then you will see the results. Also in shear, you can see utilization ratios for shear force. 
and also here you can write utilization for combined now this is done and perhaps you need to just make it up to have a better looking coming back to the beginning of here some notes that i do not want to forget here for example you want to have some kind of highlight color or something for example you can use this one to show that okay this should be checked if the case is completely different also for example here for acn you can use the same that okay i need to check this later and you can simply close this area from this button and you have the option to protect area uh, you can just put a password if it needed also coming back to the beginning of the other area here and then i can just put it in the next page so here you can see that uh, you have very nice code written in a very uh, direct order and usually if i need to change these also i might have some kind of highlight here that these are values that i need to modify or to uh, define in advance or assign some new values the same for example goes to these values then i'm quite sure that when i'm starting this code i need to modify these in advance let's change this 120 kilonewton to let's say 100 kilonewton and see the results immediately still x is greater than cs1 so our code is working and then here we can see that 3 3 85 21 and here we have the concrete nonlinear and linear are not working you have less compressive load as a result you have higher tension and then it didn't work let's change something else you can keep it back to 20 and let's go to 20 kilonewton for shear force coming back to our results we can see that for shear force now it is 86 percent for concrete edge failure and here again combined is not working so with 10 kilonewton it doesn't work let's change it to 10 kilonewton and keep it as let's say 150 kilonewton for example as compressive load here we can see that all are less than 100 or are less than 100 and here are also less than 100 percent so it looks that it works with 150 and it should work because you have more compressive load so less tension in the tensile side thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and uh, you can write your own matcat code for any kind of uh, engineering task that is very simple if you know how to do it and there are several methods perhaps better than this uh, can be found but if you write by yourself you know what you are doing and you can just follow uh, your desired way to write the code thank you for watching this was the end of this playlist however if there is something in the comments and if you have any question for example for uh, non-balanced shear force non-balanced uh, bending moment coming to the a case then you can write down to the comments i will take a look and if i find time i will try to add more videos in this playlist but for now this is the end of this playlist and i hope you enjoyed from this example thank you very much and bye